I'm Gregor Thompson, I'm a philosopher and a writer, and I know what the meaning of life is. Welcome to The Struggle. This episode is brought to you by The Struggle for Meaning newsletter. This is a weekly email newsletter that I send out for free every Sunday, a short article concerning the art of embracing struggle. I also send out tips, strategies, recommendations such as movies, music, podcasts and recipes to help along the way. To sign up completely for free, go to gregorthompson.com, the link will be in the show notes, confirm your subscription and make sure you check your spam folder for your welcome newsletter and add me to your contacts to continue to receive it in your inbox for free. And that's it. You're on your way to struggling more and being more productive, healthy and motivated. Now, let's go on with the struggle. This is episode 14 of The Struggle with me, Gregor Thompson. And for this episode, I want to discuss an ancient story. Because after all, there is an endless amount of people throughout history who have embraced struggle in order to achieve meaning and purpose in the world. Each story is evidence of the power of embracing struggle rather than the meaninglessness of living in comfort and pleasure. I'm going to speak about one of the oldest stories of them all, one that completely altered societies and cultures around the world, one in which conflicts were fought based on whether or not this story is true. Now I realise that for some just a mere mention of a story like this can bring up harsh memories or can warrant a reaction of judgement, so I just want to preface this episode with the following. This is not a religious podcast. I have no religious beliefs, but I do find wisdom within some religious stories. However, I don't believe the majority of the stories to be true. So this episode and this podcast will at times decipher religious stories to uncover their wisdom, because as much as religion has caused suffering, it has also caused the expansion of moral and ethical thought, even if it got that drastically wrong in some areas. Therefore, even if you're a devout atheist, we can still find the significance, the wisdom and morals of some of the oldest stories ever told. So I'm going to start with the story of Jesus Christ. Whilst his story is disputed for its validity or truth, and whilst it is disputed whether this person even existed, there's no doubt that in his story he embraced struggle for his meaning and for his beliefs. So first, let's talk about the story of the temptation of Christ, which is chronicled in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke, in which the devil appears to Jesus and attempts to tempt him three times. Firstly, to turn stone to bread. Secondly, to cast himself off of a mountain after which angels would save him. And lastly, offering him all of the kingdoms of the world. Jesus refused these temptations, temptations of comfort and pleasure, and turned his back on comfort and pleasure to ward the devil away. The symbolization of the devil as temptation, pleasure and comfort can be morally understood as locking horns with that of Jesus representing struggle, meaning and purpose. Embracing struggle is refusing to give in to the temptations of the devil. Do not let him pull you off of your true purpose of meaningful struggle. It also represents the concept of voluntarily charging through struggle, accepting its existence and confronting it. Running from it will only make its return worse. It's no coincidence that the primary strategy of psychologists for helping patients deal with fear is to confront it head on. Of course, this shouldn't mean that comfort and pleasure should always be viewed as the temptations of the devil, only when he is pulling you off of your course, away from your meaningful pursuits and ambitions, only when you're chronically comfortable and pleasure-filled are you giving in to the temptation of the devil. After chronicling his beliefs of compassion and humility later in life, Jesus was accused of holding the power of Satan. During his final few days, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, challenged money changers and merchants in the temple, and debated with those who questioned his authority and beliefs, who were mainly the high priests. He then informed his disciples about the following days and that Jerusalem's temple would be destroyed. So it was a pretty productive last week for Jesus. Whilst he was being productive, the chief priests and elders met with high priest Caiaphas and arranged plans to arrest Jesus. One of Jesus' disciples, Judas, met with them and offered to deliver Jesus to them. Of course, later Jesus learned of his fate of suffering and death and held the Last Supper, 
in which he sat with his twelve disciples for the Passover meal and gave them his final words on faith. He privately let Judas know that he would betray him and told Peter that before the crow of a rooster he would have denied knowing Jesus three times. Jesus instituted the Eucharist, which in the Christian faith represents a covenant between God and humans. Following the Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus asked God if his suffering and death to come might pass him by. He persuaded a group of his disciples to pray alongside him, but they kept falling asleep. Then soldiers, officials and Judas appeared. Judas gave Jesus a kiss on the cheek to identify him to the soldiers. One disciple attempted to stop the arrest and cut off one of the soldier's ears, but Jesus reprimanded him and healed the soldier's wound. Even when faced with one of the worst fates a human can face, Jesus remained morally stable and stuck with his beliefs of forgiveness. Jesus was then taken to the high priest, interrogated, hit and spat on for not responding. Peter had followed Jesus to the high priest's court and hid in the shadows. Three of the house servants asked if he was one of Jesus' disciples, and each time he denied it, you guessed it, a rooster crowed. Jesus was then brought out of the house and he looked directly at Peter. Peter recalled that Jesus had told him he would deny knowing him and he cried out. Judas, who looked on from a distance, became mortified by his betrayal of Jesus and tried to return his payment for betraying him. However, he was told that he was guilty. He threw the coins into the temple and hanged himself later. The betrayal of Jesus' disciples symbolizes the significance of empathy and the toll of regret and therefore preaches the morals of good judgment and social conduct. The following day, Jesus was brought to the high court where he was mocked, beaten and condemned for his claims of being the son of God. He was taken to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. At first, Pilate said that he found no fault by Jesus. However, due to the demands of the crowd, he relented and ordered that Jesus be crucified. The Roman soldiers then whipped and beat Jesus, placed a crown of thorns upon his head and brought him to Mount Calvary. He was then crucified alongside two thieves with the charge against him, King of the Jews, above his head. He was taunted by the soldiers and the crowd and he shouted in agony. Meanwhile, the sky darkened and following his death, an earthquake erupted, destroying the temple. He was then taken down and buried in a nearby tomb. That's where we'll leave the story as we all know what happens next. So what does this story have to do with embracing struggle? Well, Christ's death represents the acceptance of death and betrayal and not the victimization of oneself. Jesus embraced his struggles. He never wavered from his beliefs and accepted his suffering. There's also the moral of sacrificial being within this story. Jesus sacrificed his life in exchange for his beliefs, his meaning and purpose, and for the greater good. What we can learn from this is that the bigger the sacrifice, the bigger the struggle, the bigger the payoff, and the more meaning that is brought on following the struggle. If you work out harder, you'll feel better. If you burn more calories, you'll receive better results. If you quit your high-paying job to pursue a dream, you become all that you have the potential to become. If you leave an unhealthy but comfortable relationship, you will eventually find the one. Jesus sacrifices very being for the greater good of humanity and the good of the world. He was then reborn like the phoenix rising from the ashes, eternally changed and ultimately better. Being crucified on the cross, the very symbol of suffering, is why many bear its symbol on their person, a reminder that life is suffering and that suffering is inevitable and that we must embrace it voluntarily and admirably, just as Jesus did in this story. It also should represent the rigid structure of belief in spite of groups on either side demonizing those beliefs. The inevitability of suffering and struggle is the only thing that stands a chance of being true, so we must accept it wholeheartedly and overcome it time and time again if we are to find meaning in this suffering. Jesus' struggle on the cross also represents the only two reactionary options we have in any situation, as whilst he was unfairly put upon the cross, he cried, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Whilst he has embraced the horrors that have befallen him, he is simultaneously embracing struggle and decrying his fate. He is simultaneously the right reaction and the wrong reaction to ill fate. 
We can either heroically embrace the struggle, no matter how unfair or cruel that struggle is, or curse the world, God, and the universe for the unfair and cruel hand we've been dealt, the latter producing nothing but hatred, regret, and further cruelty, and the former, at the very least, not producing that. So, accept that you will suffer in life, embrace productive struggles, always be a morally good person even in the horrors of suffering, never betray, treat others as you would like to be treated, and don't prioritize the temptations of comfort and pleasure over the person you have the potential to be. The answer lies in the struggle. So keep on struggling. Just a few more things before you take off. First, thank you for watching. It genuinely means a lot to see people viewing the content. And second, if you are enjoying the content, please subscribe. That's the best way you can support the podcast. Now, I'll see you next week.